You're watching the news of Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. The court of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, made a statement which stated that His Royal Highness left the Kingdom of Bahrain on a private visit abroad. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has approved the 2020 2021 horse endurance season, which was escalated to him by the President of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation brief, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. Commenting on this, His Highness Sheikh Isa expressed utmost thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his constant support to the equestrian sports, affirming brief's keenness to implement His Highness Sheikh Nasser's directives in order to support endurance sports in Bahrain. He also thanked His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his continued backing of brief thanks to which the 2019-2020 season was a huge success. His Highness Sheikh Isa said that brief is keen to organize a new equestrian and endurance seasons in the best possible manner, encouraging all horses and jockeys to make ideal preparations to be ready for the upcoming competitions. He also wished all the studs and participants good luck ahead of the new season. The new endurance season will kick off on October the 16th of 2020 and will conclude on March the 20th of 2021. The first event will feature the first international endurance qualifying covering a distance of 100 kilometers and a local 40 to 80 kilometer qualifying race. The second event will be held on November the 7th of 2020 and will showcase the second international qualifiers which see competitors competing on a 120 kilometer long race course. During the same contest, the second local qualifiers will take place covering 40 to 80 kilometers. Meanwhile, the National Day Endurance Championship will be organized on December the 12th of 2020 and will include an international race covering a distance of 100 kilometers, 120 kilometers and 160 kilometers as well as local 40 to 80 kilometer local qualifiers. Next on the calendar is His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa Championship, which will take place on January the 9th of 2021. The main event on the calendar is His Majesty the King Festival Cup and will take place on February the 20th of 2021. The contest will feature various competitions for juniors and seniors and will see stunts from around the GCC state take part, including a 120 kilometer local race for GCC based studs, a 120 kilometer international race, juniors and seniors, a 120 kilometer 160 kilometer international race and 100 kilometer context. The season will conclude with His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa Championship, during which a 100 kilometer international race will take place, beside a 120 kilometer local international race, 160 kilometer international race, and a 40 to 80 kilometer local qualifying race. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fawzia Zainal, and the head of the Parliamentary Executive Committee will take part in the 13th Parliamentary Summit on Monday. The Interparliamentary Union will hold the event remotely under the theme Consolidating Women's Economic Empowerment and Financial Integration. The Speaker will address the summit and highlight Bahrain's achievements in the era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, focusing on women's economic empowerment and initiatives to benefit from successful practices towards achieving justice and equality on the basis of gender equal opportunities. Austria will organize a two-day summit which will discuss steps to eradicate gender discrimination in laws, promote women empowerment and include men in achieving this goal. Parliamentary delegation members Fatma Abbas Qasim and Shura Council member Dr. Ibtissam Hamad al-Dallal will also take part in the virtual session. Under the patronage of the oil minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, an agreement was signed for joint work between the National Oil and Gas Authority, NOGA, and the Arabian Gulf University in the field of preparing research studies on the impact of climate change on water resources in the Kingdom of Bahrain, building national capacities and contributing to building the national platform. The minister signed this memoranda on behalf of NOGA, and on the other side, it was signed by the president of the Arabian Gulf University, Dr. Khalid bin Abdurrahman Al Ohali. He praised the pioneering role of the Arabian Gulf University in supporting the course of research and scientific work in the Kingdom of Bahrain through its possessions of an elite group of academic cadres and research experiences characterized by creativity and innovation capacity as well as the long march that the university has in the field of preparing research and specialized scientific studies. He affirmed that NOGA pays attention in strengthening cooperation with various local and international academic institutions on specialized topics in the oil sector, supporting scientific studies and research and making use of its research and practical capabilities in everything that serves the objectives and strategies that enhances NOGA's role in drawing up oil investment policies, aiming at the growth of the national economy as well as specialized studies on issues of common global concern in the environment and climate and to work together to find appropriate solutions to this phenomenon. The minister noted that the issue of climate change has become one of the vital issues related to the oil industry due to its negative impact on the resilience of different sectors, including the water sector. As a process of preserving water and reducing the production and consumption of desalinated water contributes significantly to 
reducing the consumption of natural gas. He underlined the importance of joint work to preserve the various resources and reduce the negative effects of its phenomenon through the implementation of a number of environmentally friendly projects, including NOGA's project with the Green Climate Fund, the GCF, which NOGA implements with the United Nations Environment Program, and a wide range of ministries under the umbrella of the Water Resources Council, headed by the Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. He indicated that NOGA's project consists of seven main initiatives aimed at enhancing climate resilience for the water sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain, modeling the impacts of climate change on freshwater resources in Bahrain, comprehensive scrutiny of water management and use in Bahrain, rainwater harvesting, taking advantage of grey water, creating a climate and water platform that serves all sectors and government institutions in the Kingdom. He highlighted a package of water conservation initiatives and enhancing the capabilities of the Water Resources Council and released government institutions by including the concept of integrated water resources management and climate change adaptation. AGU President Dr. Khalid bin Abdurrahman al Ohali welcomed the signing of the agreement to prepare research studies on the impact of climate change on water resources in the kingdom and highly valued the confidence of the Minister of Oil, NOGA and the United Nations Environment Program to assign the study to the university. He added that the university has accumulated experience experience, depth of knowledge, and breadth of experience that includes the field of studies assessing the impact of global climate change on vital sectors in the Arabian Gulf region. He highlighted the university's consulting experiences at a global level to develop solutions and policies aimed at adapting to climate change issues and ways to confront it, which increase the credibility of the research university at the regional and international levels, and then to the existence of an integrated and distinguished study specializing in these vital issues that concern the Arabian Gulf states region, such as the issues of water energy, biological diversity, health and waste. They stressed that AGU's main contribution to the preparation of many studies on such issues at the regional level for the countries of the GCC and participants with international organizations in preparation of studies at the global level. Dr. Ohali affirmed that this cooperation is an embodiment of the effective partnership between the Water Resources Council and the university as a pioneering research institution in the Arabian Gulf region that contributes to the decision support process in the GCC and it is one of the most important goals that the leaders of the GCC state set when they directed the establishment of the Arabian Gulf University. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Ahmedan, affirmed the implementation of the Executive Committee's decision headed by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, the Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. According to the decision, job vacancies will now be announced, which will prioritize Bahrainis before giving licenses for work for potential employers abroad. This step is intended to offer citizens with more employment opportunities, along with enhancing the principles of transparency, competition and justice in the labor market. The Minister said that his ministry has completed all procedures and cooperation with the Labor Market Regulatory Authority through communicating with employers, offering human resources to citizens and providing employers with information about the advantages of this employment strategy. The minister praised the cooperation of the employers in this regard and said that this plan will contribute to the comprehensive plan to ensure the sustainability of the labor market and developing the skills and productivity of the national cadre. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 3,414 with 289 recoveries and 326 registered new cases. The Ministry announced the death of a 54-year-old male expatriate from COVID-19 and expressed its condolences to the family of the deceased. Furthermore, the Ministry urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirmed the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap and water on a regular basis, along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. This while covering the nose and mouth when sneezing and coughing and avoiding public spaces when possible. 